The global maritime defense community is currently fixated on a bold move coming out of Zagreb, where reports from Utarni on January 6, 2026, confirmed that Croatia is finalizing the single largest naval acquisition in the nation's history. This is not merely a routine fleet update, but a massive strategic leap as the Croatian Navy prepares to acquire two new multi-purpose corvettes, with the program's value estimated at a staggering 660 million to 1.6 billion euros. This incredibly wide price range indicates that the internal debate within the Croatian Ministry of Defense has shifted from, do we need ships, to how sophisticated can we afford to go? This program has instantly altered the landscape of global naval competition, attracting interest from eight nations and 12 major shipyards, all jostling to secure a contract that will define maritime sovereignty in the Adriatic for the next 30 years. To understand the weight of this decision, we must look at the context of a doctrine shift after years of stagnation. Previously, the Croatian fleet functioned more like a militarized coast guard, but new geopolitical realities are forcing them to seek true combatant capabilities. The vessels they are hunting for fall into the Corvette category, displacing between 1,000 and 3,500 tons with a length of 80 to 120 meters. This size was chosen with cold mathematical precision. It is small enough to maneuver through the thousands of islands along the Dalmatian coast, yet large and robust enough to survive the open Mediterranean when supporting NATO or EU operations. The decision to purchase two units simultaneously is also a pragmatic move to break the curse of operational availability. One ship remains combat ready while the other undergoes maintenance, ensuring that Zagreb never again faces a total vacuum of power at sea. However, building a multi-purpose corvette is the art of balancing painful compromises, a technical fact often overlooked by casual observers. These limited-sized ships are required to perform the triad of naval warfare, hunting submarines, destroying surface ships, and defending against air attacks. Physically, cramming all the sensors and weapons for these three missions into a 100-meter hull is an extraordinary engineering challenge. Usually, air defense is the sector most often sacrificed. Unlike frigates, which have ample space for deep vertical launch cells, corvettes are generally only capable of carrying point defense or short-range systems. However, Croatia's ambition to target medium-range capabilities, such as the CAM-ER or RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow, which reach out to 60 kilometers, shows their intent to push the boundaries of this class, even though it will consume vital space and significant budget. Geopolitical and geographical analysis adds another layer of urgency to this procurement. The Adriatic Sea is a unique, narrow body of water surrounded by allied coastlines, which theoretically reduces the risk of open surface battles. However, narrow waters are a paradise for enemy submarines that can hide behind complex thermal and acoustic layers. Therefore, anti-submarine warfare becomes an absolute priority, not just an add-on. Furthermore, the brutal lessons from the war in Ukraine have fundamentally changed design requirements. Croatia realizes that their future corvettes will operate in an environment saturated with aerial drones and kamikaze boats. This means the ship no longer just needs big guns, but advanced radars and electronic warfare systems capable of detecting small threats, while also functioning as a mothership to control their own unmanned assets. The industrial competition to meet these complex needs has created a battlefield of its own among the world's shipyards, with vastly different philosophical approaches between the European bloc and the Asian bloc. In the European corner, France, through Naval Group, offers the GoWind, a very mature design with exceptional sensor integration and the Exocet Block 3C missile package. But the price is often at the higher end of the spectrum due to its advanced avionics. Germany offers the Brownswick design, which is rugged and optimized for literal operations, carrying the heavy RBS-15 Mark III missile, but it has a fatal flaw in its minimalist air defense.
Meanwhile, Italy and the Netherlands offer more complex but expensive options, such as the Al Zubara class, which is essentially a high-cost light frigate, or the Sigma design, which is highly modular but rarely produced in the high-end combat configuration Zagreb desires. However, the real threat to European shipyard dominance comes from the East, Turkey and South Korea. Turkey offers the Ada class, which has been proven in the field and specifically optimized for anti-submarine warfare, something that fits the Adriatic geography perfectly. Turkey also offers weapons independence with the Atmaka missile, which boasts a 200-kilometer range and land attack capability. This is a value-for-money option that is hard to ignore. Conversely, South Korea arrives with a different value proposition size and raw power fire. With variants based on the Incheon or Daegu class, Korea offers a platform that is significantly larger, reaching over 120 meters at a price equal to smaller European corvettes. A larger ship means better sea stability and empty space for future upgrades. If Croatia chooses South Korea, they essentially get a high-end warship at a discount, an offer that shakes the confidence of European shipbuilders. On the other hand, the United States option with the littoral ship variant is viewed by independent analysts as a strategic trap. Although its radars and combat systems are advanced, the platform has a history of chronic technical issues and astronomical operational costs, to the point where the U.S. Navy itself is trying to retire them early. Choosing a ship that is already considered a failure by its own manufacturing nation would be a logistical blunder for a budget-constrained nation like Croatia. Another crucial aspect is the integration of weapon systems. Croatia already operates US-made AESA coastal radars and has existing missile stocks. The new ship must be compatible with these legacy systems. The technical debate now centers on the choice of the main missile, whether to choose the Norwegian NSM, which is stealthy, smart, and precise, or the Swedish RBS-15 Mark IV, which has a larger warhead and a 300-kilometer range to cover the entire width of the Adriatic. This choice is not just about brands, but about doctrine. Does Croatia want stealth capabilities or brutal destructive power that reaches deep into enemy territory? Ultimately, the industrial and economic impact of this decision is highly sensitive. The Croatian government faces strong domestic pressure to involve local shipyards, but the trauma of past delays in domestic patrol boat projects still haunts them. Forcing a full local build risks creating a scheduled disaster. The most plausible scenario observed by global analysts is the construction of the main hull abroad by the tender winner with the installation of combat systems done in Croatia as a form of offset. If this acquisition proceeds smoothly, Croatia will regain its status as a respected maritime power in the Mediterranean, capable of projecting force independently. However, if they choose poorly, getting stuck with a platform that is expensive but toothless, or a cheap platform that becomes obsolete before its time, this multi-billion euro investment will result in nothing more than floating practice targets that are irrelevant in modern warfare. So, what do you think about the news above? Let me know!